Um, welcome everyone, my name is Agatha. Uh, my name is Roxandra. Uh, we'll be talking about quality of daylight and effects on circadian rhythm in urban spaces. Um, because in this talk we're going to present well-known facts, uh, we would like to raise awareness on this topic. Um, and also we would like we would like to share our own um, take on this uh, subject and raise more awareness. Um, um, we thought the best place to start would be, would be at the beginning, looking at our ancestors, where um, they didn't live in any artificial lighting at all. Their days were purely in the natural spectrum of light, and at night it fell therefore for uh, total darkness apart from fire. Um, we continued to use fire for thousands of years later on in filament lamps, um, slowly extending our days. However, this didn't have much of an effect on us because candlelight gives an orange glow, which compares roughly to 1,600 Kelvin, and it fits within the color temperature of the sunset, meaning our circadian rhythm stayed as it should be. Um, to go a little bit more in details, um, I'm going to talk about street lighting. For example, in the Middle Ages, there would have been no street lighting, and people actually volunteered to guard the streets for the crime rates not to go any higher. Um, at first, citizens in some districts, they started using the candles on their windowsill to give a little glow on the streets. Um, but then, eventually, these were replaced by the oil street lamps, and later on by the gas street lamps uh, in the 19th century, only in the wealthier neighborhoods of uh, London first. Um, here we have two spectrums of light. One of them is daylight as at noon the other at sunset, we can straight away see that at noon we get a, a full spectrum of light, but that does involve a high level of blue light. Um, daylight which has high level of blue light is proven to synchronize circadian rhythm and prepare for the next stage of the day. Um, it, um, blue light also stops melatonin from being released, which is why when the sun rises and we wake up, as the blue light level rises, we are more alert and more awake, but as we go into the sunset and we get more red lighting, our melatonin is released and we get more tired, helping us to fall asleep. Looking at these two spectrums, the incandescent lamp compares, has a very similar spectrum to the sunset. And we also have um, LED at 4000 Kelvin, which compares to the lighting at early afternoon. And we can straight away see that there is a high level of blue light in the LED. This is where the problems begin because spending the day in an office that is lit in roughly 4,000 Kelvin, 4, Kelvin LED, we spend the day in that lighting and then as we leave, it's suddenly late afternoon or evening, which causes confusion to our body. Um, this means that where it should be producing melatonin, our body just doesn't. Also, looking at the fact that street lighting has been going from orange to very cool white lately, um, we live in the, leaving the office, as I mentioned before, in 4000 Kelvin, we also leave, and street lighting is roughly similar color temperature, um, meaning that... Um, uh, um, sorry. Um, you, when you leave your office, you know it is the evening. However, your circadian rhythm still thinks it is early afternoon, which then you have trouble falling asleep when you get home. Um, well, there are other ways of improving our circadian rhythm. The circadian rhythm actually follows the sun movement for 24 hours throughout the day. It's a cycle. That, and over those hours, we have high levels or low levels of energy. And these levels are actually um, they are maintained by different factors. And depending on how our body responses are to these factors, we can alter them. For example, doctors and researchers, they give some advice. Um, they actually say it's good to get, to get at least 15 minutes of sun per day. Well, when you have it in London. If not, maybe it's good to get a holiday or so. Um, 
then they recommend to get to set a bedtime every day um, and to sleep at night if your schedule allows. But maybe one of the most important is to sleep in full darkness. Uh, recent, uh, recent researches showed that our current pattern of sleeping is not a natural one. Uh, it seems that our ancestors, because they were sleeping in full darkness, they were sleeping for three to four hours a night, then waking up for an hour, relaxed, and then getting back to sleep for another two to three hours. Uh, therefore, they were waking up more relaxed and they were quite um, not stressed throughout the day. Stress at that time, it wasn't a disease as it is now. Um, we can also focus on ways of improving the spaces we live in. And we can talk here about biophilic design. Um, biophilic design is actually related to biophilia, which in Latin means love for nature. Love, um, this um, focuses on human attraction to natural world and the natural processes. And it suggests that we all have a genetic connection to the nature. The biophilic design, it brings these principles into the environment we live and we work. Um, and it, it's used to create a human-centric environment that actually benefits our health and our well-being. If we talk a bit more in details, this biophilic design, it, it means to use natural uh, materials, patterns, colors. Uh, we need to have quite com comfortable levels of um, Co comfortable thermal levels, acoustic levels. We need to use daylight as much as possible throughout the day and less artificial lighting. And in the cases where we do need to use artificial lighting, it's recommended to use tunable. Um, and also, it's very important to have views out towards natural elements. All of these changes, there were actually researches where people found out that, for example, in, in an office design, productivity was increased by 23%, and also the, there were increases in creativity. Um, in hospitality designs, guests were willing to pay uh, by 23% more with, for rooms with views out. Um, in education spaces, there were increased rates of learning by 20-25%. Um, and in retail, the presence of vegetation in stores actually helps the clients uh, to pay between 8 and 12% more for the goods and services. Well, I presented the pros to this biophilic design, but there are also cons. A recent study, actually, that was finished this year, showed that in an office space where tunable lighting was used throughout the day, um, the subjects didn't show any increase in their productivity, but they did mention they were more alert throughout their office hours. Um, in our opinion, to help our circadian rhythm get back on track, there needs to be more natural lighting used, and we need to stop washing spaces with very cool white light. Um, especially with all these choices in color temperatures and tunable lighting. Um, even our phones right now have an option when at a certain time of the day the screens go orange so that we don't have a high level of blue light before going to bed. And as a final conclusion to what we said, I think um, at the moment, as part, our, as part of the drive towards energy efficiency, we find ourselves in a time where we like to experiment, to innovate. We like to uh, look at the smallest possible LED that is very efficient. Um, but together with all of these changes that we have to keep track of, we actually have to stop for a bit and consider the environment where we live, where we work, uh, because these can cause quite high consequences on our well-being. So thank you for, thank listening. You for listening.